So tell me how Cyclone came about and the subsequent European tour. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot I'd play with that lot. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I basically, I sort of following them a little bit and I'd, I heard um, Rubicon and I really liked it. I thought they were sort of really doing something different there, you know, really sort of taking the electronic thing to another place. And I just wrote to Edgar and said, oh, I really like that album. Good on you doing what you're doing there. And about a week later, I got a phone call from him and he said, um, how do you fancy th thinking about, you know, rejoining and, and doing an album? I said, yeah, that'd be great. So we had a little chat about it. He came over to England and we met up a couple of times. And uh, then he c came back over to bring the new masters of, um, I'm not sure which album it was before Cyclone, but uh, I think it might have been Encore. Uh, so we went and met Richard Branson and gave him the tapes. And, and then I flew back with uh, Edgar to, to Berlin just to uh, start talking about a new album and and the promotion for that. So we got through the album and then Virgin set us up for the tour, did a lot of good promotion, uh, which was typical of Richard. He didn't cut corners, he made sure it was done properly. And we got a lot of sort of double page spreads in Melody Maker, things like that. And the, the tour was a complete sellout. I mean, every single gig was totally oversubscribed. There was always people trying to get in that couldn't get in. And like the Odeon at London, we had to do two because it was so full. We thought, well, well, you know, can't let all the people down. So we did it another one the next day. Fortunately, there wasn't anybody playing the next day. So we managed to use, use the same venue. So we started the tour in Berlin through Germany. The first, the first gig, Klaus Schultz turned up to sort of support me. You know, I've always got on well with him. He's a nice guy, very down to earth. In fact, we really got on better than uh, Edgar and myself really. Although Edgar and I were always really good friends, you know, we always had sort of special respect for each other, uh, which I still have, to be fair. And uh, so Berlin was the first one. Klaus turned up to try and help me out with all the problems with the gear, which included uh, the mic which was just a disaster throughout the whole tour, really. I mean, just they'd never been used to using a mic, so it just it was always a problem trying to set it up and always coming right to the point where they were desperate to open the doors to let, start letting people in, and they couldn't until I'd finished my sound check. And so it always caused a bit of stress. Um, but, you, you know, you have to go with the flow. Um, and then from Berlin, we just did a few other concerts in Germany. I can't remember where they were. I mean, I never do remember much about where we were. It's just odd little things. If something specific has happened, then that sort of sticks in your head. But even if you take photos, you can't remember because there's so much of it. And then from Germany, we went to France. From France, we went to Spain. Spain back to France, then to Belgium, then across to England, Scotland, and then back to my mum's for a cup of tea. <laughs> tell, tell me about the uh, tell me about the mafia incidents you had in Spain. Oh, that was uh, when we'd finished the Spanish tour. In them days, you know, in the seventies, you weren't allowed to take money out of Spain, so everybody knew you put the money in the bass drum kit or something you know you hit it and bought it out so we finished the tour which was a huge success you know I mean one of the gigs in Spain they bought the army out because they had about 10,000 people outside that couldn't get in because it was full up and they were trying to knock down the doors so the army was called out and they and I always go for a little walk beforehand before the gig to sort of just level out and the, all these soldiers stopped me and said, you can't go out of there. I said, well, I'm just going for my pre-gig walk. You know, they said, well, we're firing rubber bullets, you know. And they're actually firing rubber bullets to stop these people bashing the doors down. 
I thought, that's just madness. I can't believe that. You know, we're only a stupid little band. You know, what's all a big deal about? Anyway, that went well. And then we came back through the border in Spain, got the money through all right. And the next gig was in Marseille, which is fairly close to the border. And everybody knows Marseille is controlled by the Mafia. Probably still is, I don't know. So if anybody in the Mafia is listening, I don't have anything to do with it. And uh, there's no point coming and pointing guns at me anymore. <laughs> I'm not politically motivated. Um, so we got to the gig and basically the, the Mafia group had decided to, that they would be clever and set up this huge tent on the beach. Well, all our technical crew, I mean, we had a huge crew about, I think it was about 30 roadies and then an individual roadie for everybody. And a, it was a massive, massive thing. Two Arctic trucks, two other vans, four or five different cars. It was a huge, huge setup. Obviously, it took a long time to set it all up as well. Um, and uh, so the, all the technical guys were saying, look, you've got to cancel this gig. It's, we're right on the beach. The salt air is coming through. It's going to get into all the metal and the aluminium on the synths. It'll just rot everything, and we'll have to cancel the whole tour. So, of course, our immediate reaction was, you can't cancel something that's been organised by the Mafia. You know, you just don't do that. So they phoned backwards and forwards to Berlin to talk to test technicians and stuff. And uh, eventually they came back with the, the decision that we have to cancel. I thought, oh my God, this is going to be a rush for survival. I've never seen the gear loaded into the Arctic trucks as fast. It was like everything was on fast speed. They doubled everything up, you know. And we, of course, got in the cars rushed back to the hotel thought well we're well ahead of them all now they're not even going to know about it until tomorrow or it's later into the evening um and i got out of the car at the hotel and immediately these three guys came up to me exactly like you'd imagine mafia to be with their little hats and you know and they just came up to me and looked me in the eye and said you tangerine dream i said well i'm one of them you know it's not just me you know there's a, there's a few of us you know so you come with us and so we all went into the hotel and then the the road manager got involved as well and then the next thing is they're pulling guns out and they said look we know you've just come from spain you've cancelled this gig that we, you know we've spent a lot of money organizing uh you either give us all the money that you've bought you smuggled in from spain or you don't get out of france alive that's it, money of your life, basically. So we gave them the money <laughs> and set off for the next gig. <laughs> at, the, at the time, I was so relieved that we had a night off, you know, because we were playing continually. I was so pleased that, you know, oh, great, we got a night off. I know it's a bit of a risk, but we shouldn't have cancelled it. <laughs> we could have replaced all the gear with the money they took from us anyway. 